Back in the early days of Chemnitz, almost a decade ago, I dyed my first yarn. I started with some 80% acrylic, 20% wool yarn, and ran to the supermarket and grabbed some Kool-Aid packets because I did not need that much white yarn. The rest, I guess you could say, is history. But I did not film these really early projects. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I want to take a look at dyeing some of these wool acrylic blends. Uh, Mighty Stitch from Knit Picks has a similar content, although it is superwash wool, 20% superwash wool, 80% acrylic. And I thought it would be fun to try to dye and over dye these three colors with Kool-Aid. While I have dyed a lot of white yarn in this blend, I have not tried over dyeing a really saturated color or a pastel that was not already sort of like a white or beige. Uh, so I am curious how much of the original colors on these two will show through, whether we'll be able to cover it up at all, and how they will ultimately compare to one another. Because if we could get a yarn that looks heathered with this blue and then whatever other color we create out of Kool-Aid, that would be really awesome. The three colors today that I started with are white, Gulfstream, and Wisteria. Before we get started, since we are going for, you know, basically a semi-solid or a solid today, I need to go and wind these into some circular hanks. While winding these up, I did notice that the purple has a couple knots and joins in it. Um, I so rarely find these in Knit Picks yarns that uh, since it happened, I really wanted to just point it out. I think that the industry standard is like one or two is acceptable in a skein. I don't remember. I'll have to look that up. I am pre-soaking the yarn in just some plain tap water for a minimum of 30 minutes. In our dye bath, we have 16 cups of water and no vinegar at all. That is because our dye today is going to be some Kool-Aid packets. I went into my stash and found five packets of black cherry and two of cherry. <laughs> All Kool-Aid packets have citric acid, which will be sufficient for dyeing our yarn. But I picked these colors because one, it's what I had on hand, but two, these have a lot of food coloring per packet. Uh, the cherry is way, way, way more concentrated than say lemonade, which only has a tiny bit of yellow. So if we're going to see that blue get over dyed at all, this is a way that we might see something. My very first dyeing projects ever all dealt with Kool-Aid. Um, and I can't remember how many packets I used per each uh, ball of yarn. I don't think every, all of my balls were necessarily 100 grams. I think I was just sort of testing it out to see what happened. I do know that this is enough to create a nice punch ha -ha, of color. <laughs> My expectation is that our yarn will look like it's got a lot of color in it while it is wet. Um, you can see that we've got just this nice red in here. But in my experience, and if you go back to Dye Pot Weekly 35, you can see that uh, the color does appear to lighten considerably when the yarn dries. So we'll see what happens and if we even detect any color difference at all on the blue. I did grab snips of all of the yarn before they went into the pre-soak so that way we could sort of look at the before and after. Okay, I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit on our dye pot. And we are going to add our 300 grams of pre-soaked yarn into the pot. And right away, I am seeing some color on all of it. I'm not sure um, how fast or slow we might soak up the color, but I'm sort of going in. I'm not necessarily tr aiming for something dip dyed. I just want to... Uh, let the dye have access to as much of this yarn as possible. And since I did not add extra ties, and oof, this yarn is like sticking to everything, um, I'm going to move it a little bit 
sort of like swirling it through, but I don't want to end up with a tangled mess, which I am definitely sort of risking. Let's check. All right, a lot of color has actually absorbed to our yarn already. Um, you can see that this is a lot lighter than what we started with. But, uh, yeah, I think that, you know, we're definitely nowhere near red, but it does look like we took up some color everywhere. I'm just really curious if that lavender, maybe the blue might look heathered. With the blue, we're not going to really be able to tell much of anything until it is dry because it's so dark while wet. But I think that that lavender might actually be rather special. It's looking a little orangey on camera, but in person it is more pink than orange. But anyway, I'm going to let this go for, I think, 10 minutes. Oh, that's already even clearer. Um, I'm going to let this go for 10 minutes and then we will come back and take a peek. But this soaked up the color faster than I expected. After 10 minutes, the pot got nice and bubbly again. And that water is clear, my friends. So let's remove the yarn. Oh, it's heavy. That's hot. <laughs> 300 grams of yarn plus uh, the water soaked into it is pretty heavy. So there's actually a little bit of water in this pan when I removed it. But I am just going to let sort of things sit and cool off. Um, you can see that we did take a fair amount of color. And to me, it looks like that the blue actually did absorb some color as well. But again, it's wet. We'll see what it looks like in a little bit. I think the yarn could be a little tangled. But again, if you have tangling concerns, it's way easier to deal with that when your yarn is dry than when it is wet. And again, it does look like everything took a little bit of color. And that all of that color is in our yarn. Um, but certainly, you know, we're seeing more in what was the white that's now pink and the lavender. I'm going to add some clear dish soap uh, probably a couple times because with Kool-Aid packets, uh, not only do you have citric acid and the food coloring, but there's all of those artificial flavorings and other preservatives and stuff in there as well. So let's see. Yeah, we're not seeing any color bleeding. So I'm going to rinse this a few more times um, and, you know, the water is clear, so I'm mainly just trying to get some of that Kool-Aid scent to go away. But then I'm going to hang up this yarn to dry and then we are going to take a closer look at it and compare it to the original and see, do we see some of the lavender and blue show through? I'm really curious. Here are the finished three colors. There is no question that the originally white and originally lavender yarns took up some color. But what about this blue? And we added this, you know, black cherry and cherry uh, Kool-Aid to our mixture. We definitely also have some very purple looking patch in here. I don't know if the blue maybe bled a little bit and this one soaked up some of that color. That's sort of what I think might have happened because otherwise it looks like, you know, we just sort of grabbed some of these lavender skeins over. But let's take a closer look at all these colors. Remember how I had saved some swatches? Let's see. Oh my goodness. You can't even really see the white that I added just now. Um, the white definitely has the most dramatic change, followed by the lavender. The blue, I think we need to get even closer. 
If you look at the original swatch next to the dyed yarn, you can barely tell that there is a shade difference. There is a difference. The dyed yarn is a little less bright, a little darker, but you can really barely tell. I mean, if you look super close, you might also be able to feel like there's some heathering in the stuff that we dyed, but you can't really put your finger on it specifically. Like it's really, really, really subtle. And so therefore I would not recommend uh, using Kool-Aid or food coloring to over dye a really vibrant uh, wool acrylic blend. As for the lavender, we absolutely over dyed it. And we have a really cool sort of purpley yarn that does look heathered. It's hard to say if the heathering color has that lavender tone in it. Uh, you can definitely see the brighter red where the wool probably is. So I'm not entirely sure, but the original color definitely did affect the final color of this yarn. With the white and the lavender next to each other, I think that the white has the most dramatic heathered kind of look where you can really see uh, differences in tones within that yarn. And so maybe because the acrylic is white, it looks the most heathered of all of them. And in the originally lilac colored one, uh, the differences are a bit more subtle because maybe we are seeing that lavender show through. It's a little hard for me to know. Overall, what do I think? It was fun to go back and revisit something that was so close to the first dyeing projects I ever did. Back then, I wound skeins around the back of a chair and I tossed in 80% acrylic, 20% wool yarn, into a bath of a few packets of Kool-Aid and marveled at my ability to transform the colors in my own kitchen. I've come a really, really long way since then as a fiber artist in general, but especially as a dyer. And it's nice that you can work with something like this and you can still achieve really pretty results in your home kitchen. I had never played with the Knit Picks Mighty Stitch yarn base before, and I'm honestly really impressed with how silky it feels. It's an extremely soft, smooth yarn, not scratchy at all, and it doesn't feel squeaky like acrylics can sometimes. It has a wonderful shine to it, even after dyeing, and yeah, I think it is a really nice choice if you want this type of blend yarn. I'm still a little perplexed by where I guess the, some of these purples came in for the original white yarn all the way on the far right, but these are pretty cool tonal kettle dyed yarns and you don't really find something like this on the market. So using these blends you can really create something one of a kind. The skeins got a little messy, so they likely need to be re-skeined. Uh, even twisted up, you can tell that they're looking a little messy. But I'm still really happy with how it turned out. Maybe I was hoping for something a little more dramatic on the blue. But it was cool to see sort of the subtle difference between over dyeing the lavender versus the white. And with the paler starting color, you're gonna get something that looks a little bit more heathered and tonal. And likely because you know you have a greater contrast between the new color and the old color. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoy my approach, my technique, make sure you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two new yarn dyeing videos every week, and you don't wanna miss a thing. I have an Etsy store, Chemnitz Creations, that is full of yarn that has been featured here on this YouTube channel. And my stock even includes some acrylic blends. 
and you don't find acrylic hand dyed blends a lot. So if this is something you're interested in, or if you're interested in some more natural fibers and supporting uh, the content of this YouTube channel, you should go and check out the Etsy shop. You can find a link both in the video description and the iCard. Thank you so much for watching.